Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Emily Jones, head of school of the Putney School in Vermont. Founded in 1935, the Putney School is a co-educational boarding and day school for grades 9 through 12. As a progressive school, Putney values experiential education, diversity of thought and culture, and a commitment to equity and justice. Emily began her education career in Botswana, and with her husband, Gordon, went on to found the American Pacific International School in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Emily has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Emily, for joining us today. I'm delighted to be here, thank you. So let's talk about progressive education. Mm -hmm. How is progressive education different than what most independent schools, in fact, most public mm -hmm. schools teach today? I think progressive education is not, in fact, very new as an idea. Um, I think we forget it periodically. It's very similar to what the ancient Greeks were doing and what was happening in the Renaissance, and it reappeared in the 1920s um, with John Dewey. I think the biggest difference theoretically is that it's, it's designed to be an education for democracy, for creation of citizens, rather than for purely economic purposes. So it's not designed to create workers. And I think progressive students actually come out very employable, but that's not really the essential purpose of the, of the kind of education that we're doing. We're trying to create good citizens. So the whole idea of, of people coming from a diversity of backgrounds, mm -hmm. attitudes, personal mm -hmm. habits, and so on, going down this sort of assembly line of education mm -hmm. and everybody coming out in a gray flannel suit and, and, a, and a tie <laughs> right. and so on, that is not what, what... That's not what we're trying to do. Um, we're trying to create a situation in which young people learn how to compromise, first of all, which is, seems to be a good plan these days. Um, they learn how communities work because they have to help run them. Most progressive schools have a lot of student involvement in the way the community runs. Putney has a great deal of that. So the students have responsibility for themselves, for each other, for making the systems work. And they're practicing those skills of, of being a citizen in a, in a democratic society, really. So describe Putney, describe the institution and the, and the physical layout mm -hmm. of, of, the, of the campus and how this might connect mm -hmm. to, to, to that objective. We've got about 500 acres on a hilltop in Vermont. Um, we have a working dairy farm as part of the campus and a lot of vegetable gardens and um, other kinds of animals besides dairy cows. We produce about 20% of our own food there. And so the students learn all sorts of things from that. They learn how to be employed because every student has a job on campus. So they have a job. They, yeah. they, they work in, in terms of, of, of cleaning, um, cooking, in, in terms of... They do all of that. They clean, they cook, they sit on the admissions committee to decide who gets to come. A couple of them sit on the board of trustees. They milk the cows at 6 o'clock in the morning. They shovel manure. Um, look after the alpacas, you know, there's all sorts of different kinds of jobs that they have. And they rotate around, so they have three times a year they have job training, so they learn new kinds of jobs. And it's not really that we think they're going to become farmers necessarily, some of them do, um, but they learn what it takes to get things done. It, they learn how to work together with a group of other people that they didn't necessarily choose at six o'clock in the morning to get up and milk cows with that group. Um, they learn the sort of time management pieces of actually doing all Being of on work. time and, and coordinating with right. your fellows and... Right. And, uh, and the, the whole work program at Putney is student run. So they also have to learn sort of labor management because some of them are crew bosses for other kids and there's a system of, of assigning jobs and a system of what happens if a kid doesn't show up. And so there's planning, there's time and, and, yeah. and, and, and right. budgeting. Right. Um, there is then rolling out that plan to right. your fellows and, right. and, and then going through that interactivity when right. somebody objects and right. they have a right. different idea. Right. And then dealing with the fact that things go wrong and you have to fix them and, and find solutions yourself. Is this an idealized environment, in, or is this a, a, an environment that is um, intensely practical, or is it both? 
I think it's very practical, um, and it's never ideal um, by definition. I'm going to tell the teachers, the faculty, that if things are going really well, it probably means adults are running them rather than teenagers. And because every time kids get really good at something, they graduate and we start over again. And that's right. the whole point. Um, you know, sometimes people talk about, you know, there's Putney and then there's the real world out there. And in fact, I think of, uh, having teenagers in a, in a situation in which they have to take responsibility for each other, for themselves, um, for the sort of complex system that is a small community is much more real than the kind of schools that everything is just presented to them. Is this a, um, an education that is scaled for the modern challenges where workforce development seems to be so much an obsession of the education system? Teachers know that if they're teaching to a curriculum, and I did it, I mean I've taught both in the British exam system and in the AP system. Mm -hmm. um, and I got really good at getting kids really good grades, <laughs> but they didn't really know very much and they didn't know how to do very much. And what we know is that the employers are complaining about the kids coming out of colleges not being very useful and the colleges are complaining about the kids coming out of high school not knowing how to do anything. And yet people seem to be, tra the schools and colleges seem to be trapped in their own business models to some extent. Most teachers that I have talked to in schools of all sorts are trying to be more progressive than they're allowed to be because they understand that this is how students learn, that it's not about force feeding content, it's actually about a curriculum that requires the students to do the thinking. What's also interesting to me is, is when you look at the campus, you have um, some very low tech and very high tech elements of the campus. Right. But no, it's, it's intentional that we have some pieces of the campus that are quite um, the same as they were in 1935, and we have not modernized them in any way. And then we have a lead platinum net zero field house. Um, we want the students to understand that there are things about the environmental movement that say that we should reduce and reuse and go back to the old ways, which are correct, and there are ways in which the envir environmental movement is saying we should move forward and use hi high tech, and those are correct. And I think the other piece is that when the school decided that we needed to build a new building, which we do not very often, we did not get involved in the sort of facilities arms race that a lot of schools are involved in, um, there was a decision that it needed to be very green. And the decision came from the Wall Street people on the board who said we cannot saddle the Putney School with another building that uses fossil fuels. But even more powerfully from people that were on the board that were saying that students of this generation are, are told so often that we have messed up the world for them and it's all hopeless and nothing is ever going to go right. And they wanted to build a symbol of hope for the students and a, a proof that you could do something well in the future, that it wasn't all negative. In terms of, of how your classes are shaped and how your, how your faculty mm -hmm. um, is shaped, talk about um, that aspect mm -hmm. of, of uh, cultivating a school mm -hmm. where, the, um, where the faculty mm -hmm. itself mm -hmm. are carrying the values, but they also are mm -hmm. coming from other places. Right. Uh, they have their own experiences. Right. And now they're coming to a school that has a different approach, and they, they also have to learn and, and, and become one with, with that idea. They do. Um, I think one of the nice things about the hiring at Putney is that we don't teach the AP tests. We hire people that have the intellectual ability to help us design what high school should be, what a high school curriculum should be. So probably on average we get about 200 applications for every teaching job. So we can hire really good people. And it's still a little bit of a stretch for some of them when they come to realize that they don't, we don't give them some of the weapons that other schools have. We don't give the students grades um, so that 
they don't get to say, if you do this, you'll get an A, right? They, they have to actually talk about what the kids are learning and what the point is of the learning itself, rather than using those kind of carrots and sticks that teachers are used to having. What is the role of, of creation, art, self-expression in that, in that constellation? I think it's huge. We have um, a big, big art program, which is not a sort of a sideline or a frill on the outside. Um, students take arts in the academic program, and they also have, um, every evening we run about 25 arts classes on campus that are not for grades, they're not for credits, they're just for students' experience of art um, and making art. And so a kid, by the time they've graduated, may have done 10 or a dozen different art skills. And we do have some of the more um, tech related, we do teach digital photography and filmmaking and that kind of stuff. But we do a lot of what we call slow art, um, which is stone carving and blacksmithing and things that really require you to slow yeah, down. Yeah, the full smithy. And, and, uh, we do. And, 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 and you have welding stations. Welding and, and all sorts of stuff. And the, the sort of craftsmanship that students bring to that is wonderful because it's not all sort of instant, I'm going to do something and put it up on Facebook. Right? They can spend hours and days and months working on something. You're also teaching, doing things like teaching American history mm -hmm. uh, in, in such a way that you integrate um, uh, art, literature, mm -hmm. um, geography, Mm -hmm. um, political history, economic history, right. by looking at, at themes. Right. We're trying to get out of the, um, just the transmission of information. As so the recitation of dates and, right. and names right. and so on and so forth. And so to have them see the outline of how things fit together through themes rather than um, everything just being a chronological list. Um, and we, we pull together the literature and the art and the history all into one class in the American Studies class. You have an incredible diversity of students mm -hmm. uh, on campus, mm -hmm. uh, as well as a diversity of faculty. Mm -hmm. Talk about uh, where you draw your students from. Students come from all over the place, and we're often sort of surprised how they have found us. The internet seems to be a wonderful thing. We've got most years, students from between 15 and 20 countries, and we've got you know, Panama and Bhutan and Tibet, as well as China and Japan and European countries, Mexico. And they often find us through word of mouth from other families and occasionally just literally come across us on the internet when they're looking for a school that's a little different from, from the standard ones. And what prompts them to, to seek that those differences? It's hard to generalize, actually. One thing that we have noticed recently is that a surprising number of our parents are educators. We seem to be very well known now in the educational world. About a third of them, from what I can, can figure out, a third of our students have at least one parent that is either a college professor or an educator. Oh, that's interesting. And that seems to be true even among the international students. Um, so what we're doing resonates with people that are thinking about education. Um, and so we're hoping that that spreads out a little bit wider than that. I think there are people that themselves come from a more progressive background, are interested in progressive education at a theoretical level, and they bring their, their kids to look at Putney. And then there are people that really are much more traditional in, in their own education and maybe with some of their other children, but they have a particular child that may be very creative or may be very interested in environmental studies or something. They're looking for something particular and they will find us. And how do the parents interact uh, with the school? Are they, do they participate um, on, uh, at a board level or, um, and, and, and how, do you, how do you shape the board for that, for that matter, to ensure that the school is self-sustained. Right, well, we have a board of trustees, which I think has 24 people on it at the moment. And interestingly, two of them are students who are fully um, voting members of the board. Two of them are faculty or staff. And the rest of them are a combination of alumni and parents. 
although almost all the parents that have been on the board while I've been at Putney have been past parents rather than current parents. And that sort of ensures that the, the long-term mission of the school by having a bunch of alums. Because they're Putney alums, they're not the sort of alumni that want it all to stay the same because they're progressives by definition, but they understand what the, the underlying ethos of the place needs to be. But we also have parents, um, either current or past parents, because they really are looking at the specific experience of the students. But our board of trustees meets with the student body every time they meet, so they get what's going on at school. It's not this distant, unseen group right. of people. So, and it's, it, it, it has an emphasis on, on governance and mm -hmm. governance divisions right. and so on and so forth. So you right. don't have board members coming in and, and taking a management role. No, it's, it's actually the board, um, it's a great board, a lot of expertise from a whole variety of, of fields bunch of really smart people, but they know what the board's role is, which is governance and strategic thinking, the sort of 50-year plan as opposed to, you know, what's going on in chemistry class. And funding for the, uh, for the school on a sustainable basis, um, how, do, how does your revenue uh, mix result in your being able to make ends meet year over year? Well, it's always, a, it's always an adventure. Um, <laughs> But no, we're, we're actually in reasonably good shape because unlike a lot of schools and colleges, we never went into debt. And so a lot of schools and universities have debt that's almost as much as their endowments. We're in good shape in that way. We certainly are trying to raise more endowment. One of the real commitments of the school is financial aid. Mm -hmm. And about 45% of our students are on financial aid, which is huge for a school that doesn't have a whole lot of money. Yeah. Um, and we're very committed to that, but we need to raise more endowment for that purpose than we have. And I'd like to pay the fa faculty better. I mean, all of those things it would be nice to, to have more money for. And, and so we're working on that as we go along. But we're in a much more solid position on a sort of a year-to-year -year basis because of not having borrowed a whole lot of money. So you've had a very interesting zigzagging career as well. How does somebody who starts off as an educator in Botswana yeah. uh, end up uh, uh, running a school like Putney in Vermont? There actually are through threads in all of this. So the school in Botswana was founded as an anti-apartheid model school. So it was pushing the envelope of its own society right at that point. So although it was you know, teaching to the British exams and all of that, it, there was a very progressive mission there. But I do think that um, when we think about progressive education, that's what we're preparing kids to do, is to either to zigzag or to reinvent or to design their careers and their lives because we haven't the faintest idea what they're gonna need to know. And people are, and don't, don't work at one company for 20 years and then get a gold watch. No, and they, they have to invent the, even the medium of the job that they're going to be doing 20, 30, 40 years from now. And, they, and they, we want people that are going to create the worlds that they live in, not merely survive them. And when I go and, and talk to Putney alums, they're doing that. I mean, I talked to, I talked to a woman who started the biggest solar co-op in Washington, D.C. She's one of our alums, and she went to some group of people that ran solar co-ops and discovered that the person who started the other, Putney, the other solar co-op in Washington, D.C. was also a Putney alum. <laughs> you know, so people are starting things and doing things and, and creating new worlds for themselves. Um, they weren't taught how to do that at, specifically at Putney, but they were taught how to think that things could be different because we let them practice on our school. They, the kids learn if they want something to be different at the school, they've got to figure out how to make that happen and make a proposal and figure out what it will cost and who's going to be affected by it and who you have to talk into it and all of that sort of complex systems thinking. And that will allow them as they go into their working lives to be flexible and, and nimble and adaptable and, but also to create the solutions as well as just survive the problems that they encounter, I think. Emily Jones, thank you so much well, for sharing your you. experience it's been fun at, to talk with you. at Putney, and yeah. thank you for your insights. Okay. Thanks so much. Thanks.